Okay. Um, as we start today, I just want to remind us about um, Isaiah 60, I'm sorry, Isaiah 26 and verse 3, um, which uh, is a promise we read here. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. you know, trust in the Lord forever. That's verse 4. For in yeah, the Lord is everlasting strength. And it goes on to talk about um, what the Lord does, right? Um, so this promise is here that um, the Lord will keep someone in perfect peace, one in perfect peace. Um, and the word used there is shalom, shalom, whose mind is stayed. You know, so the our faculty of thinking and uh, imagination and um, everything is stayed on him. So that's a promise, and we know that uh, you know that example of someone who whose mind was stayed on the Father was was the Lord Jesus. He walked in such a way, and he walked in that um, awesome, amazing peace. And we know that he walked in it not because um, you know he, uh, because of, he because he was God, but because he walked as man, as empowered by the Holy Spirit, as each one of us. You know, we are, we have the privilege of doing the same thing, right? So, so when we, when we read this verse, when we encounter this verse, um, uh, we just need to tell ourselves that, uh, yes, this is, is a possibility, right? We know that sometimes temperamentally people can be easily agitated and we, we see some folks who are, um, who will not, no matter what, they are not shaken. Right? No matter what they are calm, nothing excites them, nothing agitates them. Right, temperamentally, uh, emotionally, they are very, um, very, very. You know, they are not given to emotions. Rather, very, very stable. Right, um, but this is something that is for all kinds of people, right? irrespective of who they are temperamentally and what personality types and all that. Um, when our mind is stayed on him, we have access to this shalom, shalom, like this perfect peace. Right? So the Lord promises that he will keep us in that place of shalom, shalom. That doesn't mean that we will, you know, emotionally we will not be, uh, you know, we will not be excited or we will not be, um, you know, we might not feel sadness or grief. Whatever. But the fact is that we will experience the shalom. We will walk in the shalom. Right? And it's such a great privilege. And the next verse is, of course, saying to trust in the Lord forever. Trust in the Lord forever. And the time frame given there is forever. Right? Not in the good seasons, not just in the bad seasons, um, in the low seasons of life, but trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. So we see two words there which talk about um, that time period which is uh, which is never ending, right? So trust forever, and verse four again, uh, for in Yah is everlasting strength, right? For in Him is strength this that does not get depleted. Right? We have access to His peace. We have access to this everlasting strength when we trust in Him, and our mind is stayed on Him. Right. So let's just pray today, and um, yeah, let's uh, let's just thank the Lord, Father. We thank you that um, uh, for this promise, Lord. Uh, we thank you, O oh God, that um, that you have uh, desired for us, each one of us, to walk in this God. Yes, Master. Even as we apply this principle of uh, Lord, our minds being stayed on you, God. And uh, and Lord, we thank you that um, that is something that we can do. That is our responsibility, God, because you have entrusted us with self-will uh, and the power of choice, oh God. And so, God, we, we even as we come before you, God, Lord, we, we trust in you, uh, even as our mind is stayed on you, Lord Jesus. Lord, teach us to do that. Teach us, O oh God. And even today, right now, I pray for those of us, O oh God, who are um, Lord, having trouble in that area, having challenges in this area, Lord, who are swayed by different things and uh, who are undergoing uh, turmoil and the storms of life. God, uh, I pray right now, uh, 
Lord, that um, you will enable us, O oh Father God, uh, to be anchored, O oh God, our minds to be anchored, Lord, in you, Jesus, our minds to be stayed on you, Father God. Lord, may your voice, your word, your principles, O oh God, and um, you, O oh Father God, Lord, I pray that we'll be anchored to that, Father God. Yes, Master, we'll always come back to that, O oh God. Let that be the bedrock of our faith, O oh God. And Lord, may we experience the shalom. May we experience the shalom, O oh God. Yes, Father God, we thank you for the, uh, in you there is everlasting strength, O oh God. And uh, even as we trust in you, Father God, we thank you that you make this available for us, even as your word says that though those who trust in the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength, O oh God. We thank you for this everlasting uh, strength that is available for us, O oh God. And Lord, we, we thank you and we give you praise. We, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands one more time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Um, let me just give me a second, please. Okay. Let me just share the notes and uh, So we've been studying about uh, the conquest of the mind, right? We looked at different aspects of the mind being um, what it is, uh, the way it has been designed. Um, you know, he who has the mind uh, has our thoughts, excuse me. He has our mind, has us. And so, um, so we see that uh, that is something uh, uh, that the enemy can use to his advantage because uh, uh, the mind can be or is in reality a, a battlefield. So um, so we see, saw that uh, part of it that, uh, well, we need to be aware, first of all, that, <clears throat> well, these things are going on. So we cannot just uh, think whatever we want and still expect to, um, to walk in peace, still expect to, you know, for our actions to be righteous uh, and holy, you know, for our imagination to be something else, for our meditations to be something else, and to expect that our, you know, our uh, lifestyle or behavior to be something totally opposite of that is, uh, is, is not possible, right? We need to understand because uh, ideas, thoughts, imaginations have consequences right it, they affect our emotions they affect our uh, our behavior they affect our lifestyle so uh, one needs to be mindful okay and the best way you know the best way to uh, um, to actually uh, conquer or the, these battles in the mind is to saturate our mind with the word of god Right. Saturate our mind, fill our mind with thoughts of God, and uh, so it's not about um, you know not about thought control, but really allowing the Holy Spirit to to guide us. Right? Where um, we we are just not going after each and every negative thought, but really filling our minds with the Word of God, filling our minds with meditating, thinking intentionally on the Word of God, not just thinking about okay, I shouldn't think about that. I shouldn't think about that. I don't want to think about that. You know, the minute we start, we are actually thinking about it, right? Uh, let, let's say when we say, okay, I don't want to think about a black dog. You know, immediately you think about a black dog. The image of the black dog is in your mind, right? In your mind's eye, you can actually see it. So, um, so that's, uh, that's the thing. We, it, it is to uh, renew our uh, mind or fill our mind with what God wants us to think on. So rather than saying, okay, I will not think about this, you intentionally think about, you know, think about the good things, right? Meditate on the good things, meditate on the word of God and uh, see and experience the washing of um, the washing of the water by the word uh, in our own minds, right? Okay, so uh, we looked at how uh, we need to pull down strongholds and we looked at uh, the uh, pathway of, uh, of um, or, or the temptation 
we saw in James chapter 1, right? Um, and we looked at uh, 2 Corinthians 10 um, about pulling down strongholds and so on. So the battle in the mind in the form of reasonings and arguments and imaginations and strongholds, right? Um, so let, today, let's look at, um, you know, this aspect of renewing the mind, okay? Renewing the mind. Now, if you go to Romans 8, Romans 8 um, describes a mind that is not renewed, okay? Romans 8, and um, uh, <clears throat> maybe we can read from uh, verse 5, right? Romans 8 and verse 5, it says, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh you know it's it's a, important to note that uh, doesn't talk about the action but it talks about the thought right but it talks about living right those who live according to the flesh it talks about those who live in such a manner but it talks about the the what they actually do right if if a person lives according to the flesh well it goes beyond a doubt to state that that person is actually setting their minds on the things of the flesh. That's the root of the matter. Okay, So that's what uh, verse 5 says. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, again, the things of the spirit, meaning set their minds on the things of the spirit. Okay, so so this is what it is to uh, to live according to the flesh, to live according to the spirit. This is the root thing. This is the key thing to set our mind on it. Okay, which means our minds to be captivated by it, our minds to be full of it, right? Our thoughts to be full of it, our focus to be that. Okay, verse six for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So this is the end result of a carnal mind, or the end result of a spiritually minded, um, you know, uh, minded lifestyle, right? To be carnally minded is death. It brings about death. The fruit of it, the end result of it, is death. In a sense, um, well, is it talking about physical death? Uh, death is cessation of life, right? Uh, where we cease to live. Like figuratively speaking, we actually cease to live. We cease to live. We're just existing, maybe. Right? Uh, we're just going through so passive, and uh, we're not really living. We're not alive in that sense. You know, we're not experiencing the Zoe God kind of life that God has for us or wants for us to experience, because our our actions are all different, and our mind is fleshly. Okay, so it says to be carnally minded is death. And it starts to manifest in uh, all aspects of our lives. Like right? relationally, it brings forth death, right? Uh, in, the, in terms of health, physically, it brings forth death. Uh, in terms of, you know, all other um, areas of our life, it brings death. Instead of bringing life and peace, it brings death. Okay, so to be carnally minded is death, uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Okay. It brings forth death, or it brings, uh, you know, instead of life and peace, because God is life itself. Right? He is the way, the truth, and the life. Right? So he is life, but our mind is not set on him. Okay. The carnal mind is enmity against God. Is totally contradicting or opposite of all that, all who God is, right? No, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. You know? It is not subject, meaning it, it, it is not brought under the law of God. It's not the will, is not obedient to the law of God. Uh, but look at the second part of that verse. It means nor indeed can be, right? Uh, it's very difficult for such a mind to be, to have the ability. Right, that's what it means, right? Nor indeed can be, meaning ability. Um, so that kind of a mind is not able, right? even if there's a glimmer of some kind of a desire or hope, it's not able because the mind is fleshly, right? It's not able. The carnal mind is enmity 
is an enemy of God. It is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed, you know, can be. It does not have the ability to subject to the law of God. Okay, so that's why those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, but you are not in the flesh if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, and uh, and so on. Right, um, and then uh, we go on to verse thirteen. It says, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay. So uh, a carnal mind, we just saw what a carnal mind does and what the carnal mind uh, is capable of. So we see that it's a very serious thing indeed, right? Uh, to have a carnal mind. To be a believer, to be a child of God and have a carnal mind is... Uh, is particularly frustrating, right? And also, where it's like you know, God has brought us into life. He is uh, He has brought us into light, the kingdom of light, and uh, we are under a different jurisdiction. We are uh, we've been given the promises of God. We we are you know the life of God flows in us. But something is stopping. Something is stopping that person from living. Uh, the whole life, right? And uh, and there are all kinds of problems in the mind, in the realm of uh, you know, a mind and emotions because of this. Okay, so that's something to really introspect and see. Okay, if a, if a person is well undergoing these kind of uh, things, you know, uh, what is the condition or state of their mind? Right? Is it carnal or are they dwelling on things of the spirit. Okay. Um, if you look at, uh, in, um, yeah, a question. Someone has a question. Yeah, yeah, Divya, go ahead, please. Thank you, thank you, Pastor uh, Jake. So, uh, my question is uh, about, uh, like, people can be uh, mm. only in these two sections. Is it uh, like there could be people who? Do not completely understand, mm -hmm. or even even in uh, our own life journey, we don't completely understand the will of God, and we might, you know, uh, do things that are uh, either by mistake or without knowledge, or uh, it could be even though God speaks. Uh, uh, we go against, you know, the will of God. So it, mm. uh, I don't know whether it can be labeled as carnality, uh, mm. but uh, I was trying to understand whether uh, people can be only in these two sections, like spirit controlled and, you know, flesh controlled, mm. or is it like there are people who are growing in the Lord who um, may make mistakes uh, mm. in understanding the will of God? Yeah, yeah. See, now, now that's a that's a different scenario altogether, right? Like your mind is set on pleasing God. Let's say you're the you know your whole posture is okay. You know, I, I want to please God. I want to do things that please Him. Right? That now that's a spiritual minded life. But in the course of that, yes, there are unfinished parts of me. I'm growing. Uh, I'm growing in sanctification. Uh, I'm growing in you know consecration and. Uh, I'm maturing, you know, growing in Christ-likeness, right? So, which means that uh, in certain areas there, there could be strongholds, certain areas there could be, you know, things which are which are being broken down, which are being, you know, and and like we see in Second uh, uh, Corinthians three, right? It's, it says that we are being, uh, we are uh, uh, from glory to glory, we are being transformed into that same same image. Is it Second Corinthians three? Yeah. So we, uh, you know. Uh, as we all with unveiled face beholding and in the mirror the glory of the lord are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory so that's that's a different scenario here um, you know the the person for whatever reason the mind is focused on fleshly things okay now you know even if if a person is journeying into christ likeness maybe there are certain things that are you know that are that are the, uh, the, the mind is focused on you know certain aspects of our life. We are focusing on fleshly things, but the intention is that hey, I want to please God. I'm struggling in this area, but I want to please God. And then the Holy Spirit leads us. You know that's why the when we walk in the Spirit, you know, as as prompted, uh, we are conducting our life, ordering our life according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right. So then we 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 align, we change, and then. We we move on, 
right? But if my mind <clears throat> is constantly set on fleshly things, that is the scenario here, where it is impossible, uh, does not have the ability to live uh, a, a life of righteousness. Sure, sure, Pastor. So, yeah, it, so, yeah. yeah, even the uh, so the the people who are uh, even growing in the Lord, uh, we can say like uh, they are spirit led, spirit controlled. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, but you know, the thing is, there there could be certain areas of carnality. Like, mm -hmm. You know, maybe in some aspect of our lives. But by and large, you know, we want to please God. You know, look, for example, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 3. Uh, it's uh, where Paul is right, the Corinthian church, right? So he's saying, uh, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Right? Now, this is a church who is, uh, of course, which has experienced the, the gifts of the Spirit and, and so on. But uh, with regard to... Uh, you know, this aspect of their lives, you know, divisions, strife, and all that, they're still carnal. And because of carnality, you know, they're not able to receive the solid food, uh, you know, that, that Paul really desires for them, God wants for them, uh, because of that. So we see that, you know, yeah, well-meaning believers, uh, spiritually experiencing the gifts and, and all that, the power of God, uh, but in this aspect of their life, this carnality. Yeah. Sure, sure, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Um, okay. So, so what is the, you know, what is the antidote or what is the solution? The solution is, uh, of course, to renew, renovate, change, change our thinking. Okay. So, um, I'm I'm sure that you know in a secular setting or you know, even in you know in, in the media you know this is this principle has been expounded over and over again right you you change your thoughts you change your behavior and it holds good it is true okay but um, you know but the but the foundation is the the life and peace that comes from knowing god Okay. It's not just changing our thoughts to something else, but it's it's from knowing God and knowing um, uh, knowing Him and His words, and uh, because His word is spirit and His word is spirit, His words are spirit and they are life, life producing, right? So uh, it's not just behavior modification, but it's also uh, producing life in us. Um, the word. So that's the that's the difference. You know, we can say okay. What about you know someone who who does not know Christ, who's you know who's still changing their who are changing their behavior and you know modifying their behavior and it's just that what they speak and you know all that thing of NLP, neuro linguistic programming and you know they're speaking the right words, thinking the right thoughts and you know result is behavior modification. Yes, you know that's that's great, uh, but we are talking about something deeper here. Right? Um, we're talking about um, you know him uh, producing life in us, right? Where there is death, is leading to death, but here it is life. Okay, and um, and of course the whole thing is that we are connected to the vine, uh, Jesus Himself, and uh, producing fruit. Okay, so so that's the deeper, that's the the bigger picture of the life of a believer. And of course, it's about the destiny itself, right? Where is this whole thing leading to? Right, that's the important question. Okay, a modified behavior. I'm living a good life, but you know, where is that leading to? Where is that destiny? You know, that question is you know is satisfactorily answered only when in relationship with Christ. Right. Okay. So, um, so the key is this: uh, renewing our mind. Okay, for uh, for a person who wants to come out of carnality and get into living a spiritual life uh, and come out of all this you know battering that the mind receives right and live a life of wholeness and uh, unhealth emotionally the key is renewing the mind okay so romans 12 and verses 1 and 2 well, let's re read that uh, i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, 
acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. So, um, so here's a very important key for for transformation, for experiencing transformation in our lives. Right, uh, very important key. So, verse two says, "Be transformed." So, which means that you know you uh, there, there's transformation, there's change, drastic change, like right? metamorpho, drastic change, where one stage does not actually. Uh, is not uh, recognizable to that next stage. Right? The first stage and the last stage are totally different. So uh, be transformed. Experience that drastic change in your life. How? By the renewing, right? by the renovation, the changing of your mind. Um, and get to you know experience, investigate, and prove, uh, and live in the, the perfect will of God. Okay? Um, and verse 1, you know, it gives us certain practical things. Right? You present your bodies a living sacrifice. So our bodies consist of all our members, all our organs of perception, right? Our eyes, our ears, our you know our, our tongue, words that we speak, and and so on, touch, and, uh, taste, and and everything. So our organs of perception. So he's saying like, you present your bodies to God. Which means you submit, yield your your organs of perception to God, because that is also going to influence your thinking. Okay, um, that is going to influence your thinking, because that is where we receive our input from, right? Um, so that is going to influence your thinking. So submit first of all. Know, to God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And the second thing, the practical thing, is do not be conformed to this world. To conform means to fit, to fit in, right? It's like a mold where you, it's like a you know mold, and then you press something into it. So it, it it's you know if you if you take some kind of a like a soap dish or something and put wet sand or wet uh, clay or something in it and it takes the shape of that container right so um so that's the picture so do not be conformed do not fit in to the world or do not be conformed to this world meaning the world's ways the world's patterns for everything that is in the world that we see in uh when john talk, talks about the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life so so um you know don't don't fit in to that uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So don't don't fit in to the ways of the world. So that's what it means. Right? It's, um, so whenever the world is referred to, you know, the context is this: uh, the world's way of doing things, um, not just uh, you know anything else, but the the world's culture, the world's values, which contradict the word of God, which which go against the word of God. So don't fit into that. Right. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In Isaiah 55, also, you know, we we, we see this, uh, where uh, the, uh, the Lord says, you know, let the wicked forsake his way, and the un Isaiah 55 verse seven, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Okay, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and He will have mercy on him, and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. Okay, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my way, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Okay, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And then he goes on to say how you know, about his word, uh, which will not return void. Uh, but the, but the thing is this, you know, uh, there's a right way of uh, using this, right, or uh, understanding this, and a wrong way, right. So the right way is this. The context is that the Lord is talking about wickedness and unrighteousness, and describing that you know a, a people who are uh, wicked or unrighteous, or a person who is wicked and unrighteous. So, so he's saying, okay, the wicked, their life, the way they live, is wicked or unrighteous. So let them forsake that. Okay, and saying, 
the unrighteous person, unrighteous man, let them leave that. Let them forsake that. What is it? Forsake the thoughts. Because it's the thoughts that are leading to the ways. And it's the ways that are displeasing. right? And so uh, saying, let the unrighteous person forsake that thoughts and, and return to the Lord. He will have mercy and he will pardon. right? And in that context, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. So he's talking again about the thoughts of the unrighteous, ways of the wicked, whom he is instructing to forsake, you know, the ways and thoughts to forsake. Right? So sometimes as believers, we we say, okay, you know, uh, this is what you know we're desiring, this is what we are planning, but you know, we, we say, okay, but our thoughts are not his thoughts, our ways are not his ways. So uh, you know, that's the uh, Sometimes we use it that way, right? There could be truth in it because if it's wicked, if it's unrighteous. But the thing is that, um, you know, as uh, believers, we are the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God, right? Romans 8, you know, those who are the sons and daughters of God, the sons of God, um, this is the privilege. They're led by the Spirit of God. And then, of course, the Lord Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, they know me and they follow me. So, Obviously, when we hear his voice, when we, you know, when we are led by the Spirit of God, then our thoughts are spirit filled. Okay. So even in the other case, you know, like when our mind is stayed on him, right? We looked at Isaiah 26, he's keeping us in so in a, in a place of perfect peace, shalom, shalom. So our mind is stayed on him. That's and in that case, you know, it's not carnal, it is. It is spiritual. Our mind is filled. We are meditating when we meditate on the word of God. We are filled with the thoughts of God. Okay. So uh, it's wrong to come to that conclusion, you know, in such cases to say, my thoughts are, you know, we, we, we think that it's a great statement of humility, but it's actually not, you know, it's an er erroneous, er erroneous one. So um, to be confident, you know, spiritually confident and say, yes, God, you know, uh, this is what I've done. This is the posture of my heart. And uh, and let my thoughts be aligned. And and he will, you know, as, as his words um, uh, saturate our, you know, where there's a rich deposit of his word. And, and as our mind is saturated with the word of God, and as we experience uh, transformation in our behavior and speech and so on, that, what is that? That's the effect of, uh, you know, our thoughts being saturated with his thoughts his ways right so um, so yeah just wanted to mention that okay so um when we renew our minds we undergo transformation uh, a renewed mind results in life and peace and uh, we are invited to live by a renewed mind so and renewed mind uh, you know is is a is also one which is um, which is positive in nature okay uh, if you look at uh, philippians 4 um, um, Paul's exhortation is, you know, brethren, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, uh, virtuous, praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Or think deeply on these things. Think over and over on these things. Right. Um, so a mind which is which is really positive. Right? A mind which is thinking deeply on the positive things. Okay, so question here, you know, does that mean that uh, I can't think about problems? Uh, I can't, uh, you know, then how do I solve problems? How do I solve, uh, you know, issues? Does that mean that, um, you know, I, I need to think through those things, right? So, so what's the difference? What do you think, question? So how, you know, in a workplace, you are assaulted with problems. You know, we are, in fact, uh, we are there to solve. Right? We are there to solve those. I think we are there to solve those things, and uh, that's why you know we are there in the first place. Ministry, we, we do face a lot of, you know, a lot of things, a lot of problems, a lot of uh, things to solve. Um, maybe you know, you're a counselor, then you are constantly hearing things. Okay, so what is the difference? Or how do I approach that? Keeping trust in God, even though you know there are being realistic, like mm -hmm. not, to, not to deny that there is a problem, but 
to be realistic about it uh, and not to be worried or uh, you know constantly anxious about it but uh, trust god uh, to work through it so i have heard someone saying uh, like uh, when we go through a problem or a suffering uh, rather than asking why me uh, we can ask what through me right uh, like what what can um, god what you want to accomplish through this in me so yeah so just having a different perspective uh, like a godly perspective that's what yeah I want to share right. thank you divya yeah thanks that's true uh, godly perspective mm. uh, trust not losing our trust okay anyone else how would you approach that because this is a very practical thing this is bound to happen and i mean i'm sure that you are you know every day we we go through this right so anyone else any thoughts i think uh, not taking it personally is uh, one of the approaches maybe we can think of Uh, still thinking uh, of <laughs> okay uh, no personally in the sense uh, uh, john uh-huh. so let's say for example if it is an issue or if it is a, a, a let's say an argument or something in the office or in the church um, so there would be reasons that we don't have to take it to our personal uh, what do you say uh, because of a personal matter it's is not uh, coming to us as personal matter maybe it is an issue we can solve mm-hmm. it in the superficial level itself not taking it to heart mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm okay. not sure if i'm making sense but <laughs> yeah i'm just thinking uh, you, know, you know maybe something is directed at you personally then not to take it you know maybe um yeah not to be offended by it not to be uh, you know uh, let's say you you know you preach one sunday and then you know somebody gives a feedback you know uh, pastor's preaching is always like this or something like that you know uh, of course you know we can uh, you know we can also always correct but then to yeah to not not to you know um, let Over-work that challenge you that, yeah. yeah not to let that challenge you as a person as a child of god not to let that yes. affect you know that part of that of that truth yeah. you know or your calling uh, or your the mission that you're on the vision that you know so because it can right uh, so as pastor is always then we say okay man what is it <laughs> you know uh, maybe it's i'm not meant for this you know that's the conclusion wrong conclusion that we can come to right so so yeah so i i get that when you say not to take it yeah, personally so it's in that just all that aspect stand on the ground of who we are in christ and mm-hmm. you know. yeah thank yeah. you right. thank you so so the thing is this you know when see there are ways where we can um, uh, there are there, it, it is very possible that uh, you know uh, we can be swamped overwhelmed by the magnitude of the problem by the emotion of what is happening and and it can lead us into a downward spiral okay um but you know just to just to look at this and the previous verse you know like uh, philippians 4:4 4, rejoice in the lord always and again i will say rejoice uh, let your gentleness be made to known to all men the lord is at hand and and uh, knowing that paul is a, you know the, this is a prison epistle he's writing in imprisonment while he's in prison in philippi and then he is you know writing these to people who are free you know gives us a gives us insight into you know the kind of um, you know mindset uh, or uh, you know he he has actually come to who he has become as a follower of christ as a child of god um so Uh, so that's a that's a place of strength and uh, and of course Paul said imitate me as i imitate christ right so that's a that's a place of strength so he's in he's in prison he has every reason to be uh, or you know we can say every natural reason to complain and uh, and to say uh, and and to be sorrowful and uh, and all that uh, while i'm sure he was 
aware of the reality right he says because he says i we die daily right so he's aware of the reality that uh, that this is a dangerous thing and it's a danger to life it it can it can just end any time he's aware of that but he's aware of the greater reality right so which is what you know every time we face problems every time we face challenges to uh, to not uh, escape from it see one way is to sh just shut it down and say no there's no problem no there's no pain no there's no challenge and i i will not i will not even consider it right but the fact is that there is you know it's not escaping right it's not checking out of reality but to consider it and say hey there's something greater and uh, the reality is something else yes this is what facts are saying but the reality is something else and i'm choose choosing to go with that right i'm choosing to go with that i'm choosing to uh, solve these things from that perspective okay which is a place of great strength and so paul is saying you know meditate on these things be anxious for nothing right uh, that's what he says before that uh, be anxious for nothing he talks about the peace of god which will guard our hearts and minds uh, you know give us that stability and strength and whatever things are true noble virtues meditate on these things right so for example if i'm in a you know paul is in this prison like situation so he's saying yeah this is reality i'm in prison i'm in a very uncomfortable place physically uh, i don't know you know what what will happen but i know the greater thing is this the reality is that god is with me the reality is that. so that's the truth right uh, that he's not let me the one who uh, closed the mouths of uh, lions in the, in the den you know he's the one who was there in in the furnace uh, you know he is with me so that's the truth so he's choosing to meditate on that he's choosing to think about that uh, he's choosing to think about the things that are pure and noble and so on um, he's choosing to go beyond that right so so that's the way uh, to go about it's not delusional it's not escapist but uh, we're choosing to go beyond that okay so that which is the next uh, you know uh, topic which is to develop a positive mindset so a positive mindset is is not uh, you know it, it's in it's rooted in reality right it's rooted in the truth okay um, because there are ways you can go wrong with it right positive mindset so it's it's rooted in reality it's rooted in the truth okay so we have the negative things they have we have uh, you know what are, what is pessimistic you know overly negative over and over again frequently being negative you no know, never looking at the positive side of things right uh, i remember once uh, someone telling me you know they, they had this youth uh, i think it was a, it was a youth fellowship uh, you know outreach or something and then they were all sharing um you know other things about uh, each other and and they were about one particular person this person said you know you know uh, i think this this is a person who sees two negative signs in a positive sign <laughs> you know uh, like uh, if you take a positive sign you know you take it apart it's like two negative signs like two dashes it's actually put together like this but then if you take it it's an so somebody shared like that uh, you know, talking about the personality of that person right so we can be you know uh, overtly pessimistic uh, not even seeing the positive things so to seeing two negative signs in a positive sign even right so we can be to that come we can uh, actually be in that place but um to be a positive person and be a truthful person is to be rooted in the truth of god's word right so that's the thing when we say rooted in god or rooted in the truth of god's word that means to esteem god's word esteem what he declares about every situation you know to honor that and to hold that as the final thing right to hold that as a, as something uh, yeah you know as something precious as some so to honor that really uh, that's a person who's rooted in the word of god right uh, so uh, that doesn't mean that a person will not experience negativity right you know you not experience fear but you overcome that with the truth of god's word whatever god has spoken over you whatever was prophet prophesied and proven and you're waiting for the manifestation of that you hold on to that right and in every situation in every situation what is who is god in that situation right so that's the mindset of a 
of a victor of a winner right? the mindset to have a positive so this is something that does not happen immediately right like again uh, because we are all different people with different personalities different kinds of you know ways we have different experiences that we have gone through so uh, some people can you know see the silver lining in every cloud right they are full of sunshine every morning every night even after the sun sets they are brightly shining uh, but some are melancholic by nature you know they always sing songs in the minor scale <laughs> so uh you know that is possible but it is this is something that can be developed okay? which just like how the transformation of a person happens by the renewing of the mind where renewing of the mind is not something that is automatic it is intentional it is a, it is a process the same way developing a mindset which is a outflow of a renewed mind really the having that outlook outlook uh, is also something that is uh, that we can intentionally develop over a period of time right so uh, so that means that um, you know the the, the uh, example of the 12 spies uh, and each of their observation right the observation of the 10 the conclusion of the 10 and the observation of you know Joshua and Caleb and the conclusion they came to totally different they saw the same thing but it's totally different they they acknowledged that they were giants they acknowledge yes you know, they are giants but the conclusions they came to were vastly different right and it comes from a place of seeing things um, from God's perspective okay and uh, yeah so we'll stop here and we'll continue uh, next class uh, and we look at more of this right? okay thank you God bless Bye-bye.